Right then guys, today we're going to go through setting up the new force feedback on race room. So it's a very simple process. Um, what we do is we'll take you through it in a second, show you what I do for my wheel, give you a few examples of where you might want to tweak things for certain wheels and uh, show you what I do in game to set up the cars. And uh, hopefully it'll help you out. Right, here we are in the force feedback menu. You see on top of that, this is my control software for my um, DD wheel. I've got the seven newton meter simplicity wheel from the UK. Uh, I'd imagine it's fairly sim similar in feel to what the CSL DD will be. Um, I love it. Bit of a bargain, three hundred and fifty quid or whatever, four hundred quid, including the GT room, quick release, which is like a ninety quid quick release on its own, the base and the extension plate. So. You can find one. I highly recommend them. They also do an 8, a 10, and a 13, I think, are the new range. So there's a few out there, plus a 25, a 15. I think I saw a 65 on their website, but that might be might be taking the piss a little bit of that. Um, so these are my settings in there. These are obviously varied depending on what your wheel settings are. But let's get into the main one, which is the game. So obviously, first things first, force feedback on, on that. I don't have it inverted. Some wheels might need that. Um, I know when I fired up R Factor, my wheel just used to spin. Boing, 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 boing like that. I can't replicate it because it's on and working. But um, all that's doing is invert the force feedback. So if you get that problem, that's the button to press. Now, key bindings, I recommend doing this for the force feedback meter and then the multiplier up and down. And you'll, you'll see why later in the video why you want these mapped. It just saves a lot of effort quitting back to the pits, going to the multiplier, putting it up a few bit, driving out, going from there. Uh, the, first, the default key for this is G for the, the meter. Um, I've, but I've mapped it to my button box, which is down here on my uh, right. Well worth having. So then we've got the settings. And here you've got some, where my mouse is on the right here of the screen, you've got some setting options. So it's if you've got less than 10 newton meters, you want it 100%. Over 10 newton meters, less than 100%. Linearity, if you've got more than 5 newton meters, 100%. Linearity, the strength obviously is the strength of the output. Some games I run this lower. I could get away with running, I sometimes run this at 85, trying it with 100 at the moment and bringing the multipliers down rather than having it at 85 and bring the multipliers up to see if I like the difference. I think there is, a, I don't know if there is a difference. To me, it felt like there was more to gain using the multipliers rather than the overall strength. But I think that might have been a bit of a in my head feeling. So we're going for um, that. Linearity, what this does is if you bring this down and look at the graph, it amplifies like, you get a 50%, it amplifies the smaller ones and you get a little bit less detail in the peaks and troughs. If you've got a um, like a Logitech or one of the lower end Thrustmaster wheels, doing this might just give you, if you're losing a bit of de feeling very light or a bit of detail in the bottom end of the steering, not when it's loaded up, but when it's just, go, like, just going down straight or so in really easy corners, bringing this down will give you a bit more feeling at the lower end. Minimum force is again a similar thing. So then it's actually that this actually boosts the. It's the bottom range of it, so you can bring up the low end. This will compress the sources together, so it's a bit more con constant. This boost boosts it up. You can get if you can't feel the low end stuff, boost this up a little bit. Normally, it does stop that sort of dead zone on some of the lower end wheels as well. It's very, like again, the Logitechs, the lower end Thrustmasters, you can have like a gap in the force feedback just around center. Minimum force will normally sort out. And maximum force, yeah, controls the clipping point. So you can, you don't want your, you want your wheel to give out loads of power in the middle, but not do the high bits. You can set it like that. Can't see why you wouldn't want the whole range, to be honest. That seems weird that anyone would just that. This one, I would actually play with this. I think it's default 50. I can't see any difference. 
So it, it might not have a damping effect turn on my wheel, to be fair. And then all of this I've left off. It's off at stand at the default. This could be useful for getting some lower end wheels if you want a bit more bump when you go over curves and stuff. Gear shift effect I love from the old force feedback, force feedback system, so I might bring that in. But yeah, quick overview of everything you've got there. If you want to read more details on it, I'll try and remember to put a link into the um, dev notes about the force feedback and how it's all calculated and stuff like that. They go into a lot more detail than I can explain or even understand. Force feedback meter open in the top of the screen, as you can see, top right hand corner. This will tell us where we're getting our peaks and troughs and how close we are to that red line, the clipping red line. What we want to do is we want to set the force feedback multiplier so that the car will sit just below that red line and peek into it for the really big bumps, but we don't want to be going over too much. So we're in the 1995, I think, AMG Mercedes DTM uh, at Daytona Road Course, because why not? I've purposely set the multiplier low so you can see what the graph is like and then we'll purposely overset it and you can see what it's like when it's there. So, um, without further ado, let's drive out of the pits while it's low. Show you what you can see in the graph. So you'll instantly see that there is some movement on the graph, but that's it. We'll let the car load up a bit when we get some speed into it. I mean, the wheel is very, very light. And there's really no feel to it at all. So if you load into a car like this, then you know you're gonna have to turn things up. As you can see the things on there. So I've got my button mapped on my button box. So I'll whack a few of those. Turn it up a bit and let's see if we get any difference. So already I can feel some resistance. Graphs coming up. Try bumping it over some curves and stuff to try and get a little big ones there. We need a big curve. Right, so you can see we're sort of halfway. We should get a bit of loading on the car around the the oval section. This will give us a. Uh, Sort of a sustained force, I guess. It's not a lot. These cars are probably they're not as aerodynamic as say the Indy car or the Formula Race Room 90. But it still definitely needs to be turned up. You can see we're peaking midway through the graphs, so it's got 10, 10 clicks on that roughly. It's not an exact size, there's no fixed number for any one wheel. But as you can see, I'm now getting a lot more resistance in the wheel. We're peaking just below the red line in there. Bit of a mullet, bit of a drone, the old engine around this bit. Get it into turn one, see how it first. Probably one of my favourite corners ever, and I get it wrong a lot. I really enjoy that. So that's the sort of bigger bumps there. You can see it just below that line. So this feels good. We can still get more, we can fit more in. So I think another one, two, three, four picks up. Yeah, that peaks in that bump in the road there. Obviously you might have to adjust this slightly track to track because some tracks are rougher than others. So. I uh, say so having buttons mapped either on the keyboard or on your wheel. Got a couple of spare ones you don't know what to do with. Map them to the uh, force feedback multiplier. Now I'm getting as much data as the wheel can give me for my straight force. Mine's a seven newton meter uh, simplicity direct drive wheel, so you some idea of what you're going to expect on the uh, CSL Elite, I suppose, or the not CSL Elite, the CSL DD. I sold my CSL Elite just before they updated the physics, the uh, force feedback, so I can't tell you what that would be like. 
We're now, we're pretty much perfect. The big peaks into the red. I can feel every little bump bounce of the car. You can see it in the wheel if I hold it lightly. I let go. On a flat bit. Over on the bumps. <laughs> Around a corner, so if I let go, why don't she? Oh. So when he bumped into the back of me, because we got a spike there. So that's the sort of thing we want. We, we want it spiking just into there. I could probably push it maybe one more notch, but I've got all the detail. And because it's a physics based, like, horse feedback now, you don't get that. You don't get them little like can gimmicks, but you know exactly where the limit of the grip is because of that. Because whatever is happening in your car, what happens if you turn the traction control off? Whatever's happening with the car is coming through on your force feedback, which is what we want. Now, so that put me 2.7, that did. So if I go to 4.9, that should give a good enough demonstration of what it's like when you're over what you need. But it'll look all right at first, be a lot of weight to the wheel. See that, we're just turning and we're right on the edge, we haven't even got to loading it up on bumps yet. See where it's. See the new sparks as well. See where it's just flat. Now there's no detail in that. It's just heavy. So what you're not getting when you do that is you're not getting. Let's turn that up a bit so I've got some actual grip. I know some people like a heavy full speed, but it's very heavy. But you're not getting any of the detail. So you're not feeling the suspension wobble. The dips and bobs in the road, you've just got weight, but no detail. It's not vibrating or shaking around or giving me anything, anything at all. It's just gone heavy. So this is, you don't want this. This is the last thing we want to be soon. Well, yeah, it's perfectly drivable. And I, it reacts to the back end stepping out. It's no good, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was four. That's three. One, two, three. Two point seven. That should be roughly. See now, still getting decent weight in the corners, but I'm also getting the D. I'm also getting the pitch of the suspension, like when you hit the bumps. That's the new sparks as well, I think they look really cool. Maybe a little bit over over the top on these cars, I don't know if they would spark that much. They probably would, they're bottoming out a lot, which you can feel in the in the force feedback, and if I had my base shakers on as well. So yeah, that kind of really sums up how to set up your force feedback. So, without further ado, back to the studio. So guys, that was my quick rundown. Um, if you liked what we did in here, we've got a lot more videos where I try and explain little bits in iRacing, Reseto Corsa, uh, ACC, I do some, and Race Room, obviously. So, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you back at the channel soon.